Good morning, good morning, and uh, welcome to Trinity Lutheran. Um, we are in the, we are celebrating this, this is the third week of Advent. And next week it'll be the fourth week of Advent, and then the following Sunday will be Christmas Eve. Let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that we lose our bearings. We get swept away by the temptations that abound. We lose our center in you. We do not care for ourselves in healthy ways. We do not see the people around us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may live in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The word of Jesus is that you are loved. That God loves us. That God embraces us. That God cares about us. That is a word of good news. It's a word that, that we are never beyond the love and the forgiveness and the grace of God. And it is one of my privileges to proclaim the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand for our opening hymn. It's about John the Baptist. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord, Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save. 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, may we embrace the truth that you who come to us, that you who are with us, that you are able to bring us life. May we seek and ask for your help that we may be an unanxious presence in our world. May we seek and ask for your help that we may be made new through your Son, Christ, our Lord. Amen. May be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among all the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Israel, we were like those who dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter. Our tongue was shouting with joy. It was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoice. Restore us, O Lord. May we sing with shouts of joy. Those who go out bearing the seeds for planting shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their hearts. The second reading is from the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. We shall sing the first three verses of Alcom Emmanuel as we light the three candles. 
symbolizing the three weeks of the Advent season. <coughs> You're like wicked smart. She's a, she's a wicked smart. Yeah, I know. I think I know. You, you know? What, what, what do you think Christmas is about? It's what Jesus writes about Jesus. And Jesus is all about giving. Right, it's all about giving. So, are you going to give anything to anybody? Yep, 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 yep. What are you going to do? I'm going to give some clothes. You're going to give some clothes away. I'm going to give some food away. You're going to give some food away. There's a big crowd here today. <laughs> There's a big crowd here today. So you're going to give stuff. I'm going to give some clothes to people who don't have enough clothes. You're going to give clothes to people who don't have enough clothes. I'm going to give food. You're going to give food to people who don't have enough food. To people who don't have enough food. Because that's a Jesus thing to do. That's a Jesus thing to do. Are you going to do anything for for for, for Mama? No. <laughs> It's 
about spending time with family. So it's good. This girl's an intellectual. I am an intellectual. So I'm going to be with my family. You're going to be with your family. Are you going to give anything to your, to your mommy? I'm going to make something. You're going to make something. And that's a real nice thing for you to do. I'm going to make something for Mama Frog. You're going to make something. Is it? Yeah. Whoa. And one's for me already. And one's for you. And my mom's. Oh, you gonna do anything for mom at Christmas? Yeah. Are you? Just tell me, tell me, tell me what you're gonna do. Whisper, because she's here, and you want to keep it a secret. Go back to your seats. Remember, Christmas is not given. One hand. I'm going to work on that. But no hand stand up. How about that? Grace and peace. Oh, we have our gospel reading. This is a great gospel reading. Um, so let us look at this uh, gospel reading. It's by John the Baptist. And it's from the, the gospel reading. It's from Matthew chapter 3. Glory to you, O Lord. Before I read this, let me, let me set the scene here. It's important to understand this. John the Baptist is basically a prophet. And John looked at the conditions of his culture, and John said, this is a mess. This is terrible. There is so much oppression. There is so much inequality. And then John said, God's going to come, and God is going to change everything. He saw God as this powerful judge, and God was going to change everything. And the question then was, well, when's God going to come? And this is a strain in Judaism, even now. And the attitude was, when we're good enough, God is going to act. So what did people do? People were baptized in the River Jordan, confessing their sins, and then they stood before God, cleansed and good. So if enough people are baptized, enough people are good, God will act. Well, the problem was God didn't act, number one. Number two, John was killed. Jesus was a follower of John. He was part of that entourage. So then the, Jesus then took John's message and amended it, so to speak. Jesus said, look, God's not going to act like that. God is going to act through us. But it's not all about us. We need God, and God needs us. So it's a collaborative relationship. So here's the reading. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, change. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God is going to come. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, when Isaiah said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make the Lord's path straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair, a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. In other words, he came from the wilderness in fulfillment of that prophet. Then went out to him Jerusalem, all Judea, all the region around the Jordan. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when John saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? God's going to come. God's going to change everything, and you're in trouble. Then he says to them, bear fruit that befits repentance. Do not presume to say to yourself, well, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. This is John's judgment. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. God is coming. It's going to be a judgment. 
Here ends the reading. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. What I hope that we take away from the story of John the Baptist and Jesus is this recognition that it's not all about us and what we do. We need God. And it's not that God's going to do anything. God's going to work through us. Now, I can't talk about y'all, but I can can deal with me. It's very difficult for me to understand that sometimes that I need God's help. Because my inclination is to say, I've got this. I can do it. What is that expression? If you want something done... Do it yourself because then it will be, it'll be done right. I don't need or want your help. I will do it myself. I can manage. This is the American way. It is the self-made person who can handle everything. And it, it is, it is a, it's kind of the macho guy who can take care of everything that comes along. Or it's the woman who can manage. I can just manage everything. I could manage the house and the kids and the job and decorating for Christmas and buying all the... I can manage. <laughs> right? Right, I can manage. But that is the sense of independence that we have, that, that I don't need any help. So when I broke my ankle and, uh, and messed up my, uh, my leg, um, I, I was on crutches for three months, and so I was recovering. And it was my dream to get back on the bike. And the bike is indoors in the wintertime, and it's on these rollers, which are the equivalent of, of a, a treadmill that you might walk on, but they're rollers. So you put the bike on the rollers, and you've got to balance it, and that can be a little bit difficult. And then you clip in, your feet clip into the pedals, and then you just go along. So I was really looking forward to this, and my wife was not looking forward to me going on this with my screwed up leg. So the first 10 minutes went well, and I did really well. She said, do you need any help? And I said, no. No. I said, "I, I got this. This is my world. I got this. So I'm on the bike, and, I'm, and, and it came time to get off the bike. And I'm clipped into the pedals, and my one leg is not so great. So I'm holding on to this table, and I'm trying to get my foot out without twisting it too much because, you know, I just couldn't twist it, and I couldn't get out. This created a moment of crisis. How was I going to get out? And it put me in that position where I thought about calling my wife. But I did not want to call her. Because then I would get the the sermon. The John the Baptist sermon. What's wrong with you? Why did you insist on doing this? You should just have a piece of pie. Enjoy yourself. So I called my wife. because (laughs) Because the reality was I needed That's the great issue for us. Can I recognize that I need help? Can I recognize I need to turn to God? Lord, help me. Because I can't do it on my own. Lord, help me. So as we manage this month of December, Is there that mentality within us, that consciousness, I need help. I don't got this. Can I then turn to God in the midst of this and say, Lord, help me. We gather here on Sunday morning because at some level what we are saying is, I need guidance from the teaching of Jesus. I need the spiritual help and strength that I get from God because I don't got this. 
So for instance, let's look at some key teachings from Jesus. Jesus said to us, look, go forth and we, we, forgive people that are around you, that hurt you, forgive them. Left to my own devices, I'm not inclined to do that. I have been hurt, I have been wounded, I am, uh, I am uh, in pain because of it, I am suffering. But Jesus' words to me are, John, look, those people are living in your head. Those incidents are living in your head. They are owning you. If you want to be free, John, forgive that you can be free. That those people don't possess you as they currently are possessing you. Can you forgive? I don't got that. I have to turn to God and say, Lord, give me the strength that I need. Give me the strength that I need. And what John is saying is, God is able. God is able. Can I have that humility that moves me to say, I'm going to turn to God to give me the strength that I need because my God is able. I'm not. Jesus said, look, Everyone has got gifts. Different gifts are different people. Some people are, have huge gifts. Other people don't have gifts that are big. But we all have potential and possibility. I preach about this all the time. We all have potential and possibility. We all are given the parable as the parable of the talents. We all, have, uh, the, we all have these talents. Then the issue becomes the word of Jesus to us. Use those talents, invest those talents, do something with those talents. But you know, there's a part of me that gets stuck. Sure, I get stuck. What else happens to me? I get stuck, I get... What? Someone said that and it was not me. <laughs> I get stuck, I get lazy, I get afraid. I get afraid. I can't make those changes. I get afraid people will judge me. I get afraid people will laugh. I get afraid I will fail. And so the word of Jesus is, look, this is the way to life. You got to do something with this stuff that you got, brother and sister. Do something with it. But I get Stuck, I get lazy, I get afraid, I get fearful of failure. So turn to God, because God is able. God is able. God is able. It's really interesting, I'm going to conclude with this. Can I, Jesus said, look, uh, take healthy care of yourself, but have some concern for the people around you. Be invested in the people around you. Be connected with the people around you in a healthy and a good way. Well, it's really easy for me to get rooted in, in me. Can I break out of me to care for someone around me? And she said, look, love yourself, but love others. Can I break out of me to care for the people around me? Because it's really easy to get roped into this me thing. Now, what I read this week, which I thought was really interesting, is that in 2008, the levels of contentment and peace, happiness, if you want to use that kind of frivolous word, that levels of contentment and peace in our society began to go down. They began to plummet. Can anyone take a guess as to why the levels of contentment and peace began to plummet? 2008. Contributed to... The recession took place, that contributed to it. What else do you think was the real cause? Big, big push started right around then. Yes, yes. Social media, because social media invited social comparison. This is especially profound for young women. Social media invited social comparison, and social comparison is the thief of joy. Social comparison is the thief of joy. I think it applies to all of us. Facebook opens us up to that. Twitter opens us up to that. So how can I stay 
in a place of contentment out of which I can care for other people. If I'm jealous of others or envious of others, it's really difficult for me to care about them. If I'm feeling depressed and deprived, it's really difficult for me to care about others. How can I keep myself in that good place where I can care for others in a healthy way, which will benefit them and benefit me? It'll lead me to the abundant life that Jesus says. How do I do that in this kind of culture? Well, one step is to stay off of stay off of social media and all of those things that would rob me of joy and contentment and peace. Is that easy to do? No. But where can I turn? Because I don't got this. This is a major struggle for me personally. I don't got this. So where do I turn? I turn to God. It is my prayer at communion. It is my prayer in church. It is my daily consciousness. Lord, give me the strength because God is able. Give me the strength that I can live that kind of life. It's a consciousness that we develop. It's just not a Sunday morning thing. It's a consciousness that I can, and prayer is not just what we do with our hands folded. That is one form of prayer, but prayer is really a consciousness. It's a consciousness of God. It's a consciousness that I am hooked to a God who is able. I may never be perfect, but I can make progress. I can make progress. I can make progress in how I might forgive the people around me that they don't possess me. I can make progress that I can use the gifts that I've been blessed with that my life might blossom. I can make progress that I can care about other people so that I'm not trapped in this captivity to me. I can make progress. Because I don't got this. I need help. And John the Baptist said what? God is able. going to sing Change My Heart, O oh God. And we're going to sing it twice. Yes? Yes. Twice. <laughs>
Help us to see the uncharitable thoughts that float through our minds. May we turn away from that which leads us astray. May we turn to you, for you are able. And may we live with gratitude and a measure of serenity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, in the midst of our daily lives, may we maintain an awareness of your presence with us, that you are able to be our help. And may we take your hand, Lord, and walk into new life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of peace, we live in a world beset by the desire for more power and more money and more acclaim. We are so burdened for the people of the Middle East who live with such horrors. And we are burdened for the people of the Ukraine living with daily warfare. Inspire, Lord, the leaders of the nations that they find a way to peace. Lord, in your mercy. Guide our church, Lord, that all who gather here may be engaged by your teaching. May we cherish this gift of time and all of the gifts that you provide. Save us from constant busyness. Help us to set boundaries for ourselves that we may be people of joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray, O oh Lord, for Anna Anderson in this time of mourning. We give thanks that the Wolfs and Barbara Bolton have recovered from COVID. We are mindful, Lord, of people who are silently dealing with illness and struggle. We pray, Lord, for folks who deal with depression and anxiety, especially in this season of merriment. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your presence through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God's peace be with you all. And also with you. Let's get about to share God's peace.
saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering the words that Jesus taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be
invite you to stand if you're able. May we live in the grace that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May we live with open eyes, trusting in the promise that God will meet us in all of our tomorrows. May we have the confidence that when the going gets a little rough, God is beneath us, and God can carry us through. May we have the assurance that the light of Christ shines behind us to dispel the shadows of the past, that we may be set free to live in the light. May we have the confidence that Jesus is above us and has prepared a place for us in God's kingdom. And may we live with the awareness that God is able and God is with us always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers.